In this video, we will explore the rich history and development of the National Park Service, which manages more than 85 million acres of protected land in the United States. We will discuss the creation of America's first national park, the influences of environmentalists and artists, and the government policies that led to the establishment of the service. We will also examine the challenges faced by early park managers and the expansion of the agency's mission to conserve and provide public access to these natural and historic treasures for generations to come. The National Park Service is a federal agency housed in the U.S. Department of the Interior. The U.S. Congress officially designated Yellowstone as America's first national park in 1872. This milestone inspired environmental advocates like John Muir to push for the creation of additional national parks and monuments throughout the American West. President Woodrow Wilson created the National Park Service in 1916, placing America's federal parklands under the control of one agency. Today, the National Park Service is responsible for millions of acres of parkland across the entire country. Many countries worldwide have looked to the National Park Service as a model for their own park management efforts. Before the 19th century, Europeans and Americans generally regarded nature as nothing more than a source of food, clothing, and shelter. In Europe, early conservation was primarily focused on the protection of trees for timber and wildlife for hunting by wealthy landowners. Although America's national parks were inspired by earlier European conservation efforts, they were distinctly American in origin, grounded in the principles of democracy, art, and philosophy. In the 19th century, popular writers including Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, and Walt Whitman found inspiration in nature. During the same period, artists such as Thomas Cole, Asher Durand, and Albert Bierstadt painted the breathtaking American landscape in all its grandeur, shaping the ideals of the American conservation movement. As settlers and explorers moved westward, many Americans embraced manifest destiny, the notion that America had a moral obligation to expand westward. During their travels, they discovered extraordinary natural beauty, such as the beautiful Yosemite Valley in California and the Yellowstone River in Wyoming. Early naturalists and writers such as John Muir introduced people to the wonders of the Wild West. Americans developed a sense of national pride in these wilderness areas, leading many prominent citizens to call for the protection of these sites from commercial interests and development. Under pressure from conservation advocates, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Yosemite Grant Act in 1864 which protected land in the Yosemite Valley. The Yosemite Act paved the way for the establishment of national parks and represented the first time the U.S. government had reserved land for preservation and public use. In 1872, the U.S. Congress established the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act with the goal of creating a pleasuring ground for all Americans. However, Native Americans would be effectively barred from the park. On March 1st of that year, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the landmark bill into law, making Yellowstone the first national park in America and the world. The act set aside more than 1 million acres of public land in the future states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho departing from the established policy of selling public lands in the West to private owners. Several more national parks, including Sequoia National Park, Kings Canyon, and Yosemite National Park in California, followed Yellowstone's lead. The Antiquities Act, signed by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1906, granted presidents the power to establish national monuments on public lands for the purpose of safeguarding areas of natural or historic interest, with a particular emphasis on protecting prehistoric Native American ruins and artifacts. Using this act, Roosevelt declared Devil's Tower in Wyoming as the inaugural national monument, although he was not the first U.S. president to dedicate public land to cultural preservation. 
President Benjamin Harrison had earlier set aside one square mile of land surrounding the Casa Grande ruins in the Arizona Territory, which was once the home of the ancient Sonoran Desert people. During the late 1800s and early 1900s, national parks and monuments were managed independently with varying levels of effectiveness. For example, when Yellowstone was established, Nathaniel Langford became the park's first superintendent. However, he lacked funding, staff, and a salary, and therefore was unable to safeguard the park from vandals and poachers. As a result, the U.S. Army took control of the park in 1886. Between 1908 and 1913, Congress discussed whether to dam the Hetch Hetchy Valley to provide a stable supply of drinking water to San Francisco, which was growing quickly. However, the valley was located within Yosemite National Park. Preservationists, including the Sierra Club and John Muir, advocated for the protection of the valley from human intervention. Nevertheless, Congress ultimately authorized the construction of the dam. Following the Hetch Hetchy controversy, the Sierra Club and other environmental groups petitioned for stronger safeguards for national parkland by creating a unified federal service to manage the parks. On August 25, 1916, President Woodrow Wilson established the National Park Service, or NPS, within the U.S. Department of the Interior through the National Park Service Organic Act. The new agency's primary objective was to preserve the natural and historic features, scenery, and wildlife within the parks, and to allow for future generations to enjoy them unimpaired. Stephen Mather, an American industrialist, was appointed as the first head of the NPS. Mather introduced concession operations into the national parks, providing tourists with food and basic necessities and promoted the development of a highway system that made national parks more accessible by car. The National Park Service currently manages 417 parks and monuments, encompassing more than 84 million acres. The national park system receives millions of visitors each year. The NPS projects that these sites contribute roughly $35 million annually to the U.S. economy. In summary, the National Park Service has played a critical role in the preservation and protection of America's most beautiful and significant natural and historic landmarks for over a century. From the early struggles of individual parks and monuments to the creation of a unified federal agency, the National Park Service has been entrusted with the duty of ensuring that these sites remain unspoiled for generations to come. However, the recent challenges faced by the NPS, such as funding cuts and legislative changes, have given rise to a growing movement to protect the environment and safeguard America's natural heritage. It is our collective responsibility to continue to support and advocate for the National Park Service in its efforts to preserve these treasured sites and ensure that they remain accessible to all for years to come. The United States is home to some of the most stunning and diverse landscapes in the world, preserved and protected within its national parks. From the towering peaks of Yosemite to the dramatic canyons of Zion, these parks offer unparalleled opportunities for exploration, adventure, and appreciation of the natural world. Here we will highlight and describe the best national parks in America, each offering a unique and unforgettable experience for visitors. Number 1. Yellowstone National Park Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. is known for its varied landscape, rich history, and natural wonders. As the world's first national park, it covers over 3,400 square miles and spans across Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Yellowstone is famous for its colorful hot springs and geysers, with Old Faithful being the most well-known. The park is home to an array of wildlife including moose, bears, and wolves. Visitors can witness the world's tallest active geyser, Steamboat Geyser, which can blast jets of water over 300 feet in the air. Number 2. Zion National Park Zion National Park is Utah's most popular national park, offering visitors a mystical and magical experience with unique rock formations, canyons, and gorges. 
Angel's Landing is a popular hiking trail that spans five kilometers and provides stunning views of the surrounding landscapes, but involves scaling precipices. Zion is an ideal base for outdoor activities with highlights including the East Zion Tunnel, Cathedral Mountain, Zion Canyon, the Grotto, and Weeping Rock. Number three, Yosemite National Park. California's national parks are an awe-inspiring collection of natural beauty, with Yosemite National Park being the most popular based on visitor numbers. Covering over 1,300 square miles, Yosemite is home to giant sequoia trees, thundering falls, and valleys shaped by glaciers. Most visitors head to Yosemite Valley, a giant canyon that measures one mile wide and seven miles long, where highlights include Mirror Lake, Half Dome, and Yosemite Falls. Guided tours are available, and the park can easily be combined with trips to Sequoia National Park and Joshua Tree National Park. Number four, Grand Canyon National Park. The Grand Canyon is a world-renowned attraction in the U.S., sometimes surpassing more than six million annual visitors. Its immense size, up to 18 miles wide and a mile deep, makes it impossible to fully appreciate through photographs or guidebooks. Visitors usually head to either the South Rim or West Rim for the best views, with the Skywalk Glass Walkway located in the West Rim. The North Rim is less accessible and quieter, only open during summer months. Number five, Big Bend National Park. Big Bend National Park in Southwest Texas boasts stunning scenery, including dark night skies, perfect for stargazing, sandy deserts with carved canyons and mountain peaks, and numerous hiking trails. The park's centerpiece is the 20 mile long Chisos Mountain Range, and visitors can enjoy camping adventures, exploring on foot, and discovering the features that have made Big Bend a popular destination year after year. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button Subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.